As the leaves on the trees begin to change color and the air becomes a little more brisk, we have to accept that summer is on the way out. With this comes shorter days, new beginnings, and a whole mess of spooky vibes. There's no avoiding the chills coming your way, so you might as well embrace them. It's about to be Halloween season, and you know what that means. Tales of ghosts, beasts, and monsters galore. And who better to turn to for a plethora of creepy creatures than the Canadian monster maker extraordinaire Trevor Henderson. He's consistently adding new entities to his collection, and today we've got a booster pack for you to peruse at your leisure. Of course, you could also attempt to get your hands on a copy of his new ghostly zine. Odd noises and empty rooms, but something tells me they've sold out already. If you're not already on his website, buying prints and t-shirts, let's get right to the list. It's time for the top 5 newest Trevor Henderson Creatures 2021 Part 5. Coming in at number 5, we've got Lady of the Flies. To keep with our end of summer theme, I'll kick this list off with a scorcher. Not fire, not brimstone, but late August heat. This kind of weather can be killer for even the hardiest of individuals if not approached carefully, and heat waves have a history of ending lives with their intensity. People living alone in old apartments can find that the temperature is too much to bear, and the results can be catastrophic. This creature was once a lady who lived in a quaint neighborhood. According to the caption, she met her demise on a sweltering August day. Seeking shelter from the heat in the shady alley beside her house, it all proved to be too much. However, she went undiscovered for some time, hidden away in this enclave. The buzz of insects is another constant in the late summer with wasps and flies returning to take over every inch of space they can. And at some point, the flies got to this lady. Eventually her body was discovered, but not as it was. Apparently every inch of the space was buzzing with the tiny winged insects, gorging themselves on the heat accelerated decay. That's an image I'm sure will haunt some for weeks. When something so gruesome happens, it doesn't just disappear either. It's said that every summer in late August, this woman returns along with her flies. She peers out from the darkened alley, and folks who have encountered her claim to hear the mind-numbing drone of thousands of flies. You've got to wonder what happens when somebody gets too close, or if the weather takes another victim nearby. Do the flies spread and envelop the poor victims, or are they there to act as a warning? The ghost is unique from many others in that it appears outside during the day, I'd say in broad daylight, but she tends to remain between the houses in the shade. Maybe it's just a portent of doom, reminding those who see and hear her to stay hydrated, cool, and out of direct sunlight. That's a generous reading of a ghost that appears this way, but it seems to match the theme. Keep your ears perked up for the sound of approaching swarms of flies, and if you smell decay, stay away. Also, invest in a good hat and some sunscreen. Coming in at number four, we've got Nosy Neighbors. Had these creatures been on the lookout for our dear old fly lady, maybe she wouldn't have ended up as a cautionary tale. However, they seem to inhabit a different type of housing, one that's more tightly packed and prone to overlap. Condos are fascinating artifacts of human creation. Densely populated high-rises jam-packed with people. Depending on where you look, you can find wildly luxurious living arrangements or bare-bones, meager offerings for those with little income. When you share the same building, though, there are going to be some shared spaces, shared sounds, smells, experiences. There's no avoiding it. Most folks strive for privacy and peace, but some tend to be on the lookout for drama and intrigue. I'm not so sure what these individuals are looking for, but they're definitely looking at you. Meet the Nosy Neighbors, a collective of hideous humanoids inhabiting the hallways of apartments and condos all over the place. Cashing in on the scare factor of being constantly watched, sharing your life with others, and liminal spaces, these are a sight to behold indeed. What could they possibly want? Why are they taking up the whole hallway? Are they looking out for your best interests or attempting to witness something incriminating? Could those dark spots on their heads be mouths? Giant eyeballs? Voids into the unknown? Goodness me, I'm asking a lot of questions. Although for a nosy neighbor, that's not too out of the ordinary. The longer you look at these things, the worse the experience gets. There's no way to know how long they've been watching you or if this half-hidden presence is only showing itself now to let you know it's there. They could be following you at all times or possibly just protecting certain areas. The hallways they they exist in could belong to old hotels too. Wouldn't that be just terrifying? Spending a night in a hotel in some unfamiliar city and encountering these eternal watchers in the dead of night? Better watch your back. Coming in at number three, we've got Cool Basement Lady. Don't let the name fool you, she might be cool and in a basement and a lady, but this is one presence you do not want to spend any time with. First impressions upon hearing there's a cool lady in the basement might inspire thoughts of board games and movie nights with a new friend. First impressions upon seeing her would be run, run, oh my god, get out of here. It seems that someone else had that idea too, as she's all bound up and covered in a sheet. Those ties don't seem too strong though. And did you notice that thing piercing the sheet? Yeah, it looks like a proboscis of some sort. And what else does a long needle-like appendage 
appendage do but suck blood. This would do a little more damage than a mosquito bite based on size alone. Something tells me she would continue removing your essential essence until you went bone dry. Conjuring images of mosquitoes often brings about ideas of wings and itchiness, but this presence has the uncanny ability to float without any sort of external movement. Even while bound and covered, she's three feet in the air, feet dangling down below. So if one of your friends tells you there's a cool basement lady under their house, find some new friends. Coming in at number two, we've got Sister of the Cuts. A fresh new addition to the ever-evolving canon of the Sisterhood of the Ever-Sharpening Blade, this particular devotee to slicing and dicing has a brutal looking weapon at her disposal. Members of this religious sect tend to have enormous, sharp, and menacing heads, apparently covered in veils, and will often go without additional weaponry, but not Sister of the Cuts. She has a complex and terrifying blade with her at all times. Apparently she was summoned to a secret aristocratic party in the late 19th century as a sort of novelty for guests, like using a Ouija board or summoning Bloody Mary. This get-together ended in tragedy when a drunken guest attempted to remove her veil. As one might expect, Sister of the Cuts did not take kindly to this. Not many people survived the incident. And finally, at number one, we've got Roving Moon. There's nothing quite like looking up at the night sky in the middle of the summer. If you're lucky enough to be away from a major population center for a while, you might even catch a glimpse of the stars. If not, the moon is likely to be the only celestial body you'll see on most evenings. If it's exceptionally cloudy or the moon is low in the sky, be careful when appreciating lunar glow. Possible that you're looking at an entity that is not a hunk of rock orbiting our planet. The roving moon appears to be an enormous skeletal beast, taking on the appearance of a massive undead deer or horse. At the end of its neck sits a bright luminous orb, resembling the moon we so often romanticize. I'm not sure what this entity's intentions are, but based on general knowledge of advantageous adaptations, they probably aren't good. It could be that this creature with a face like the moon is looking to trick folks into getting lost in the night sky and then scooping them up as they stare at its orb, like an anglerfish, but on land, and humongous and looking for humans. Double check the phases of the moon before you head out on a sky gazing journey tonight. Noticing the difference between waxing and waning could save you a trip to the afterlife. Ah, uh, hot spicy monsters, fresh out of the hellish oven. We tend to associate a lot of the monsters in our heads with famous, well-renowned presences, so it's always good to add a few more to our personal encyclopedias. Hopefully this doesn't have an overly adverse effect on anyone's nightmares. Oh well, you knew what you were getting into when you clicked on this video. So what'd you think of the list? Do you agree with my picks? Which of these Trevor Henderson creations spooked you the most? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more snaggletooth ones from the top five haunted homes you should never enter, part two. Amethyst RL says, I would live in these haunted houses. All five of them? How are you gonna pay rent? Are you planning on moving often? Purple Bird says, Avatar Secret Tunnel song pops into my mind. Secret tunnel, secret tunnel. Classic. Walter Green says, cool and no thanks. Walter, come on, it could be a blast. Make some new ghostly friends, sleep in some surprisingly comfortable beds. The Bright Side says, I ain't trying to go to people's homes. Not even long dead people? We're all gonna have to live somewhere someone else has already inhabited eventually. And Kevin Johnson says, a part might be needed liking the videos. Cross your fingers and we'll see what we can do. That is all the time we have for today. I'm going to remind my pet dog that humans have bones inside of them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>